on the LaSalle Explorers in boys basketball. And Steve, there may be a bigger game for the reason's sake between these two teams coming up on Friday night, the Niagara Frontier League Championship. But there's no way it's going to match the... Welcome back to the Niagara Falls Convention and Civic Center. Lou Panessa and Steve Vonza getting ready for game two of our doubleheader. The Niagara Falls High School Powercats taking on the LaSalle Explorers in boys basketball. And Steve, there may be a bigger game for this season's sake between these two teams coming up on Friday night, the Niagara Frontier League Championship. But there's no way it's going to match the intensity and the atmosphere of this one when these two teams hit the floor in front of this big crowd at the convention center. You're not kidding. Just out in the corridor of this great complex moments ago, and these fans are revved up. They are ready. It could be an exciting one here. Niagara Falls High School with its best team in a couple of decades with a great opportunity to end the streak tonight. LaSalle has just dominated this series. They have a great one-two punch in Niagara Falls High School with a chance to turn it around tonight. Take a look at Jeff Street, just a sophomore, providing 16 points per game, 6'4", 180 pounder. We will see a lot of him tonight for Niagara Falls and Dan Bazzani's squad. He, along with Julius Barnes, give Niagara Falls a tremendous inside presence and a tremendous advantage inside tonight's ballgame. LaSalle's always been small, never smaller than this year, always been guard-oriented. Here's the guy that carries the throne for them this year, DeWitt Doss. He's the captain, the senior, 5'10", averaging over 25 points per ballgame, 45% from the field. We will see a lot of number 11 this evening. With Doss on his way to Canisius. Again, a classic matchup here. Niagara Falls and LaSalle. LaSalle has always won games. Pressure defense, turnover, push the ball up the floor and score. A little bit of a tough year for LaSalle, if you can call a division title a tough year. Niagara Falls has been one of the top teams in Western New York. We'll be tipping it off with the starting lineups and the action coming up next, right here on Adelphia. people local coverage stories that matter to you isn't that what you want from your television i can make it happen niagara on adelphia it's local stories jack through your cable line straight into your television three times a week monday wednesday Friday. three times you see it you might be on it you can tape it imagine the possibility Nearly 4,000 people screaming themselves hoarse as the two teams were introduced on the floor in a unity ceremony, got their Wolverine caps, and then the starting lineups introduced. Dan Bazzani, can't wait to get this one started. Says this is his best team he's ever had at Niagara Falls High School, and who could doubt him? Top three team throughout the year in the uh, Western New York against Pat Monty in his 25th year. Kind of hard to believe that you don't see the LaSalle Explorers in the top 10 of Western New York right now, but Believe me, he can get this club ready for a big game. It should be a great one, Steve. Yes, he can. Monty, what success he's had at LaSalle. The numbers speak for themselves. They've done just about everything. 13 NFL titles, 11 section, six crowns, three New York State titles. He's done it all. Under the direction of Mrs. Joan DiTano, and Mrs. Rebecca Yacht. These fast packs brought to you by Adelphia's PowerLink, the fastest way to surf the net. Order today, get a free install, and your first month of service is free. It's a limited time offer, so call 1-88-533-2225 for more information. Steve, how about the starters for LaSalle? You see Kayron Bradley at one forward, Amir Sharif at the other, and the three-guard lineup, DeWitt Doss, James King, and Tony Moore. Doss, of course, over 25 points per ball game. This senior will be moving on next year. As you saw in that right hand column, that one starter six foot or above for the LaSalle Explorers. That tells you a lot about how they will have to pressure Niagara Falls High School today because when you take a look at the Power Cats starting lineup, you're going to see some bigger players. They've got 
course, Jeff Street and Julius Barnes at 6'3 and 6'4 for starters. Mike Lonsky and Kevin Ferguson, our two officials tonight. Rounding out the starting lineup for Niagara Falls, Damani Johnson, Rayshon Moore, and Sanquin Starks. And Lou, you talk about that small lineup for LaSalle. We've seen over the years them take teams apart. They want to get you in that frenetic up and down pace, bait you into a running match, and they will full court, three quarter court, half court pressure, whatever it takes to throw you off your ball game. The Power Cats, number three large school in the Buffalo News poll. About 4,000 plus, what more can you ask for? DeWitt Doss to tip it off against Jeff Street. That's 5'10 against 6'4, but Doss is a leaper. Folks, you gotta go back to February 1984 before Niagara Falls last defeated LaSalle. We're underway one last time in the regular season. 35 straight. LaSalle has won over Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls has not had a better opportunity than now to snap the streak. These two teams meet again Friday in the NFL Championship right here on Adelphia, but enjoy this one. This is the atmosphere from the Niagara Falls Convention and Civic Center. Everybody's pumped up. LaSalle out in a 1-3-1 zone defense. They're moving very actively early in this one. Seven on the shot clock, it's a three off front iron. Rebounded by DeWitt Doss. All five will crash blast for LaSalle. Doss going all the way up the floor. This is off. And they bring it back to Doss, he pops. Watch a big game player like DeWitt Doss try and take this game into his own hands. The captain says, I'll take the first shot for my team. And he buried it. Emotion's a big part of this one. Inside, they go to Jeff Street, and there's a foul, no shot. A man with his work cut out for him tonight is Kyron Bradley, the junior forward, just 5'10". He picks up his first personal. Bradley with a foul under the basket, across the arm on the floor, so no shooting. Here you see the first basket by DeWitt Doss. Try the alley-oop pass, instead it's a turnover. James King picks it up for the cell. From the outside, three no good, rebounded by Jeff Street. The big difference, Steve, is Niagara Falls guards are probably more equipped than ever to handle some of LaSalle's pressure, and they have the inside game. Barnes and Street can take it inside, and the pressure by Moore lays it up and in. Rayshon Moore. Amir Sharif, a smart young man, lost the handle. Goes for the floor, loses it again to the Power Cats. Well, Sharif lost his concentration, got his dribble out in front of him, leading to the turnover. Well, it's been a lot of years since Niagara Falls felt that they would have the upper hand. Another foul on the floor. Jeff Street will be whistled for that one away from the ball, trying to find some room inside. You know, some of these guys are friends. Obviously, despite being at different schools, Tony Moore talking with Jeff on the way up. Not in a trash talking way, but telling Jeff you got caught. On the cut, Tony Moore can't get it to go down. Rebounded by Sanquid Starks. He gets it in the hands of Johnson. Johnson is cut off by Tony Moore. And that's Moore's first foul, second team foul against LaSalle. Still kind of like a big boxing match, Steve. They're feeling each other out here in the early going. In the early going, you're right. Two to two, a couple of turnovers for each team. And there you see violation. Sal in that 1-3-1 one, one again. It's an open shot. Three off the mark from Moore. Rebounded by Sharif. James King brings it up. King takes it in the lane, stops and pops. Sandra! Got the roll, little leap and leader. Stops on a dime, collects himself and drains it. Lobbed it inside for Barnes. Yeah. That's a nice pass to the baseline. Doss with the theatrics got it into the hands of Kyron Bradley, who wasn't expecting it, and he dropped it out of bounds. Court side, Doss is coach for next year from the Canisius College Golden Griffins. 
watching his recruit in action here. Mark McDonald knocked off Niagara last night. Inside they go! That's Barnes. Barnes. Four over Barnes down on the baseline. Nice entry pass, beating that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Sharif comes around the screen, gives off to King. King, nothing inside. Looks for some help. Finds Sharif. Sharif taking it in on Barnes. Got it over top of him. And stealing the rebound away, James King. Good job by King getting in the lane. Stealing it away from the big man, Barnes. Moore trying to belly up Doss. He gets a double team. Doss has to give it up. James King on the penetration in the lane, off the mark. Long rebound, and Doss will pick up a foul on the reach in there as Rayshon Moore got to the basketball first. Moore tracking down the loose ball. Doss gets into the fray. More the personal. We're sub into the game for the Explorers. Brandon Jones, their six foot junior. They're going to look for a little more inside presence right now here in the early going. 6 4 Niagara Falls High School. We've played four minutes into the first quarter. The cell goes to a 2 3 zone here. Inside they go. Barnes a little short. Gets the oh. rebound. Oh, puts it back up and he's fouled. The cell with a small team, Lou. I don't know how they're going to handle Julius Barnes and Jeff Street down low. Barnes going to work already. He's got four quick points and he'll get to that free throw line. Such a height disadvantage for LaSalle. They're going to have their work cut out. They feel they have to play zone, but you better get to these guys on the baseline in a hurry. Look at the great explosion from Julius Barnes right here. And that replay. Well, LaSalle's going with the muscle lineup now. Asen Wisnat, the 6'3 junior. Smotty wants him to toughen up inside. He checks into the lineup. Julius Barnes has six of Niagara Falls' first eight points. It's 8 to 4 with 3.37 left to go in the first quarter. Sal has been unable to get untracked offensively. That's a three off the mark. Rebounded by the shooter. King kicks it out to Doss for three. No good. Rebounded by Jones. And now pulled down by Jeff Street. Outlets to Johnson. Johnson all kinds of pressure up the floor, able to hang on. Pass stolen by Jones. Bounce pass on the wing, ill-advised, easy pickoff for LaSalle. Tony Moore finds Jones, the jumper, no good. LaSalle is cold. Rebounded by Street, he's gonna push it up himself, two on one. Jeff Street hits the wingman and he can't handle the pass. Starks could not handle it, they have to pull it back out. That's Johnson for three, that's off the mark. Rebounded by Wisnack. Moore brings it up for LaSalle. And Moore with a good quick move got Demondi Johnson to commit the foul. Demondi cutting in, trying to cut off that penetration to the lane. LaSalle just two of nine from the floor early in this one. Just barely get that one in under the five second call to Brandon Jones. King around the screen, open for three, no good. Rebounded by Barnes. Talked to Frank Rotundo about this game this morning. The LaSalle assistant coach, he said, we have to shoot well early. It has not gone well early for LaSalle from the field, yet they're only down four. There's a three-pointer. Niagara Falls getting away from its game a little bit. Noss with the rebound, pushing it up the floor, trying to create something himself. Takes it to the hole, a little bit short. James King with the follow. I'll tell you what, James King has done a great job on the offensive class for LaSalle here early on. He's got four points. He's been active, buzzing around under the basket. He's been a factor early. Only 5-7. LaSalle relies on their quickness, both offense and defense. Nice passing and taking it. Jeff Street draws contact. Then a foul will go to the line to shoot two. Good job by Street hiding in the corner, just ducking 
his first To the sideline, then knowing when the first to the baseline and he gets the pass, kind of hides out in the That's corner and let the nice zone defense two. forget about him, then he barges to the baseline. Nice pass. Number 21, Jeff Farmer, a 6 4 freshman. Into the game for Niagara Falls as they bring in some big bodies off the bench, replacing Starks at 5'11. So Niagara Falls going even bigger here. Streaks on the super seat with his first points gives the Power Cats a three point lead. Doss guarded by Moore. Takes him to the hole and draws a foul. No basket. No basket. They're not going to count it. Mike Lonsky says the foul came before the shot. Sal doesn't like to call Niagara Falls does in the two bleachers across the court from one another, exchanging cheers and boos. There you see the good crossover right there by Doss. And then back to live action. King with the steal as Niagara Falls turns it over after a rebound. Now a scrum on the floor. Doss gets it to King. Drive in the dish, the open jumper knocked down by Brandon Jones. Jones off the bench for his first basket. Low scoring first quarter. Street well off the mark, rebounded by Jones. Into the hands of King. Lobbed it inside to Doss. He draws a double team, kicks it out to King. And he'll reset the offense with 15 on the shot clock. King to Jones again. No good. And LaSalle keeps it with 32 seconds left. They can take the last shot of the first quarter. Niagara Falls knocking one another off that rebound. Street, I thought, would pull it down, but collided with a teammate of his. Give the ball back to LaSalle. Inbound to King, he's gonna shoot a three. Oh. Well, now the Power Cats will play for the last shot. Down by two. Here in the first quarter, 15 on the game clock. Inside they go, and it's Jeff Harmer. Yeah. Boy, nobody wants to play for that last shot. LaSalle will get it by default. Tony Moore finds King. King with two seconds doesn't realize it and doesn't get a shot off. James King with a nice first quarter with seven points, but gets Pat Monty upset there with the medal of the stake. It's 11 11 after one, back with more. High school basketball right after this. Adelphia brings it to you on your local Adelphia Channel, Niagara Falls and LaSalle. One last time of the regular season, tied at 11 after the first eight minutes. With Vanessa and Steve Monsick here. Stay a lot of fun. Oh, it sure is. The fans from both schools are here. The fans from both schools. It's been very entertaining. The doubleheader, uh, the girls earlier, LaSalle took care of Niagara Falls and the big nightcap right now. LaSalle just five of 16 from the field in the first half. Doss, yes! DeWitt Doss can create so much for himself off the dribble. Traveling violation. Traveling violation. 
Doss will have to create his own opportunities along with King with a strong first quarter as they give up such a size advantage to Niagara Falls. DeWitt was not as much of a scorer before this year. Certainly contributed a lot to the Explorer offense, but he wasn't asked to carry the load as much as he had and this year. The foul over the power for Sean Moore, now he's pumping it in at almost 25 points a game. Coach Pat Monte has had so much talent over the years, Lou, as you know, but by the time DeWitt Doss becomes a senior, he's the man. There's a turnover. Mason Wisnat got a little out of control there. <laughs> Mike Lonsky will be singing at halftime, tie a yellow ribbon. No, too. <laughs> He's probably tired of that joke by now. I think Niagara Falls can get inside just about any time they want on this zone if they're patient. Doss anticipating that pass, stepped in front. Denying Jeff Street the ball. Now he brings it up the floor himself. Dishes out to King. That's a three-pointer. Oh. Second three-pointer for King. He's got ten points. Niagara Falls not closing out the perimeter shooting of King. Marcel opens up the five-point advantage, largest by either team in this ball game, and a timeout taken by Campazzani and the Niagara Falls bench. Niagara Falls having a tremendous season, 14 and 2, 11 and 1, champions of the Niagara Division. Their lone loss coming recently to Lockport in the NFL. Maybe got caught looking ahead to these matchups. But Lockport's been coming on of late. There's Doss with the penetration. Anytime you can collect yourself like that, have a clean look at the basket, King's done a good job burying two three-pointers early in this one. He's been the factor so far. That's an open three, off the back iron. Rebounded by King, has Doss up the floor alone. Great outlet by King, another rebound for James King. LaSalle has come out on fire here in the second quarter and opens up a seven point advantage. A little too much passing there by Niagara Falls. Rayshon Moore had a good shot and gave it up, and they almost turned it over. Took the dribble drive to the goal, trying to dump it off on the baseline, but swatted away by LaSalle. They're so quick. Andy Johnson gets on the score sheet for the first time. Johnson hanging in the paint with a soft finish. of the game for the Explorers. Ron Primerano, he's a late addition to the basketball team, hasn't been with them all year. Quarterback the football team, finally came out for basketball and had some size and toughness. Carmer did a good job down low, making himself long, creating the miss. Oh, they worked the ball nicely inside, unable to finish his Carmer on the first effort. Tied up there, and Niagara Falls will keep it on the possession arrow. Good job by the Falls, staying on that offensive board. You see Palmer going to work down there, Street, trying to keep it alive. Good hustle by both those players. Lassell has done a pretty good job at denying Niagara Falls inside game here in the second quarter. Nothing from the big guys in this quarter from Niagara Falls, and we've played the first two and a half minutes. Lassell up five. Street, tough shot, and a foul on the rebound. Going to give the ball to LaSalle. Once again, James King being a pest on the board has been in the middle of everything. Watch the little guy just get in here. He's a nuisance hanging around, draws the contact. He's got 10 points already, probably four or five rebounds and a big influence on this basketball game early. Amir Sharif checks in for LaSalle. Brandon Jones goes to the bench. Oh, Steve, it seems like Niagara Falls is the tighter team here in the big show. Doss oh. 
felt contact, so threw up a prayer, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. That's a smart ball player. How many times do you see a guy get fouled and not think to throw it up at the goal? He had the presence of mind to feel the body, hear the whistle, and let it fly. Mondi Johnson, a talented guard, just a sophomore, knows he has his hands full here with DeWitt Dawson. He picks up his second foul. DeWitt's trying to work on him. Get him in some foul trouble. Monty out there battling, bellying up again. Doss takes some baseline. No good. Rebounded by Farmer. Tiger Falls will settle back into that 1-3-1 and watch how well they move. They follow the flow of the ball. And they are quick. Amir Sharif on the backside. A runner, no good. Farmer trying to grab at it, but pulled away by Sharif. Lasell hanging on in there and doing a good job inside, hanging with the bigger, taller power catch. Traveling violation there on Primerano. Tyron Bradley to check back in for Lasell and replace Primerano. The ball take on the wing, obvious call, too many steps. Eddie, Eddie Ingram checking in for Niagara Falls. Saw it taking the steps before putting the ball on the floor. LaSalle is packing the defense in and it's worked. They've held the power cats to just 13 points. We've played almost 12 minutes of basketball. That's a three. In and out. Rebounded by Sharif. I think LaSalle will let Niagara Falls take those perimeter shots all night long. Doss, Bradley with the follow, is foul. Doss is wondering how he didn't get that first call. Yeah, Doss, very animated, slapping his forearm toward the referee, saying, I was hacked in the act, but a good job on the offensive board right there by LaSalle. Bradley completing things up. He earns a trip to the line. Barnes picks up his second foul in that sequence. Now returning to the power pass, number 33, Jeff Street. Jeff Street back in for Niagara Falls. Power cast with just one field goal here in the second quarter. Sal is Up the lead to seven. Biggest margin of the ball game. Four minutes to play in the first half. If Niagara Falls is patient, try to get it down low on that baseline where they've had some success. That's a three, Eddie Ingram. Ingram off the bench, so it's an offense. Maybe he'll provide the hot hand for the Power Cats. Doss lost the handle inside, had it knocked away. Bounce pass in the paint, tough to handle. Ingram brings it up, looks inside. Farmer got a push in the back, kicked it out. Cutting through the lane, nice pass, and they find the open shooter. Street can't finish. Put back up, no good. Street again. Game for Jeff Street. There they go. They looked inside, got on the offensive boards, and finished. Bradley on the ground, kicks it out. Sharif pulls it out. King a three! Somebody's on fire. Third three pointer for King. 13 in the game. Puts LaSalle back up five. A three to answer. Left short. Rebounded by Doss. Outlets quickly. Up the floor. Ray Richardson, the 5-4 spark plug, will go to the free throw line. Number 31, Eddie Ingram. Ingram picked up the foul. A good job by Ingram, though, getting back on defense, making the player earn the points from the free throw line. But I think Niagara Falls is going to get themselves in trouble if they start jacking up threes. I really wish they'd get inside 
Julius Barnes and Palmer and Street. That's the strength of this team. I don't think Barnes has had a touch on the offensive end in this quarter. Niagara Falls just one of eight from three point land, so I don't think that they want to have a steady diet of three point bombs. Wow, oh, after making the first, it was well short on the second. Now the game for the podcast, number 24, Tyrone Bell, and returning to the explorer. Tyrone Bell checks in for Niagara Falls and Brandon Jones in for LaSalle. Moving so well in that 1-3-1 one, one zone, cutting off the passing lane. Niagara Falls really standing around a lot offensively here. Now off the penetration, they draw a foul. Number 14, James King is guilty of his first personal. King called the foul there. Sixth team foul. Both teams now will be going to the free throw line at the next whistle. Either way. Well, that's a tough pass. Tyrone Bell took it, threw it along the baseline. There was nowhere for Rashawn Moore to go, but he was fouled to go to the line to shoot the one and one. Niagara Falls was actually pulled out on that foul on the baseline. As you mentioned, the re-entry pass, nowhere to go. Moore finds himself at the foul. Front end. Twenty-four, eighteen, LaSalle. Scores will inbound with two fifteen left to go in the first half. The backcourt pressure applied here by Niagara Falls, and then they back off. Well, that was a great opportunity. It looked like for Eddie Ingram to take off the other way with that pass, just backed off. Jones gets it to King. He took a little bump in the back from Bell. Nine on the shot clock in Doss's hands. Here he goes. Gives off. Pass stolen. That's Palmer. And he is fouled. No freebies there, excuse me, for Jeff Palmer. Palmer tried to bounce pass in traffic. He was fouled on the pass. Thought maybe he'd try to bust it strong all the way himself. He saw a trailer on the right side trying to sneak that bounce pass through traffic. Two defenders there for the south. Well, this is just a one and one since he was not in the act of shooting. And they missed the front end again. Sharif looks inside to Bradley. No good on the other side. Jones can't get the tip, but gets the loose ball. Sharif sees room, takes it in. Missed the shot, swatted out of bounds by Jeff Street off of Jones, and Niagara Falls will get it or off of Bradley. Well, LaSalle back in the defense, too, Lou. The difference is, excuse me, Niagara Falls comes out and extends that defensive pressure nearly to half court, where LaSalle likes to pack it inside that three-point arc and make you earn it from the outside. Travel. And Bazzani, the head coach for Niagara Falls, takes a long walk down the sideline. Did not appreciate that unforced turnover. As has happened to so many teams for so many years, LaSalle can take you out of your offense. Oh, boy. And they have taken the Power Cats out of theirs here in the first half. 105 to play. 24-18 LaSalle. There's a jumper off the mark. Rebounded by Parmer. Street, and it's swatted by Doss. Whoa, no call. James King got the ball, timeout taken by LaSalle. Pat Monty said, whoa, this is getting a little out of control. The body's all over the place. There was some contact. And Monty says, let's just hold on right here with 41 seconds left. 
29 on the shot clock. Make sure we get an opportunity. Here's some of this action under the hoop. What a play by Doss. Wow, right on the ball as Street tried to go up strong. And DeWitt Doss with the steal. 41 seconds left in the first half. 29 on the shot clock. You see just a near capacity crowd on the sidelines here. The end zone's nearly three quarter filled as well. Yeah, we're packed. LaSalle has 18 rebounds in this game. Six on the offensive end, Lou, and I think King's got three or four of those by himself from a guard position. Ten on the shot clock. Penetration, no good. Rebounded by Jeff Farmer. Freshman off the bench for Niagara Falls is doing a good job on the glass. Power Cats playing for the last shot of the half here. It'll be a three for Moore, no good. Rebounded by King, don't reach it. Oh. That's the half of it, LaSalle with the defense. What else is new? They force you to execute, Lou, and they understand their defensive responsibilities. They just ran a clinic in that first half on defense against the balls in this one. They take a six point lead in the locker room at halftime. One more time. These two teams meet in the regular season. The second half action is coming up next. gift at the silent and Chinese auction Saturday February 19th to donate items or for ticket information call Niagara Catholic to the Niagara Falls Convention and Civic Center I'd like to thank John and James DeVinis for setting the record straight there it is the last time Niagara Falls defeated LaSalle the game was played Friday January 4th 1985 Later that year, Thursday, February 14th, 1985, as a matter of fact, LaSalle started the streak. First half highlights, Steve. James King, three of his 13 points in the first half. The 5'7 players set the tone, offensive, defensively, on the boards. And then Ingram, actually here's King again with a three. We'll get back to second half action now. Back to live action now, the Explorers with the ball, leading by six, 24-18. Doss off the mark. But there's King again with the rebound. Wow. Amir Sharif is going to hold on to it. King gives his team yet another possession. Only oh, a matter of time Doss. before Doss gets hot, Louie. He's been a little bit cold in this one, but he does have eight points. You would expect him to find the range, and when he does, the Falls could be in trouble. When is last time that this streak started? It started, again, as we said, Thursday, February 14th, 1985. Also in the paper that day, articles about the Bills getting set to draft Bruce Smith. That was a long time ago, Lou. Spanning 30, what, 35 in a row for LaSalle. Just amazing, what a streak. And the way they're playing tonight, they don't want it to end anytime soon. Our returning to the floor, number 50, Brandon Jones. Niagara Falls has not helped itself at the free throw line as well. Damani Johnson at the line now. This is the front of two. Just seven points in that second quarter for Niagara Falls. And only two points from their big guys up front. Jeff Street got a bucket. LaSalle has denied the interior of the ball. Instead, they attack inside and attack the glass. Penetration and the dish. King and the shot blocked. It's tipped out, picked up by the Power Cats. Starks pushing it up the floor. Will slow it down. Hands it to Johnson. 
Johnson bothered by King. Looking inside, the pass knocked away. Can't get it to Barnes. And Damani Johnson has just picked up his third foul here early in the third quarter with 6.35 to play. First half stats, Steve. You see the numbers, cold shooting for both teams, a little bit better from the free throw line. Ice cold. The Underline that rebound category. Three point range, yes. How about the little guys showing the big guys to get on the rack? And King, 13 points, five or six rebounds himself, standing just 5'7. Goss! Can't get it to go. Barnes with the rebound. And Johnson trying to push it up for Niagara Falls. Rashawn Moore goes inside, almost turns it over, gets it back, and scores. Good job by Moore in traffic. Finish that one for his fourth point. Five point game, offensive foul. Well, Doss on a dribble drive, leading with his forearm, and the official right there for the wipeout call. You see Doss leading with that forearm. Sell sticking to that zone defense. Niagara Falls unable to solve it. Moore with a wild shot, got it back. No good, they battle for that street inside. They're gonna call it a traveling violation. He caught the rebound on his feet, in between steps, came back up. So Niagara Falls is gonna have to be very patient, try to find that gap inside, make a clean entry pass, because right now, Niagara Falls is playing right into the hands of LaSalle. Frustration on the face there of Jeff Street. He's been unable to get on track inside. Stolen away by Barnes. Cell not executing as well offensively for the first two and a half here in the third quarter, but still leading by five. Inside they go. Tried another quick pass. That was an ill-advised pass. Barnes looking for Street. Oh. He's ball to the floor. Goes to Dawson. He finishes. Good. Good job by Dawes cleaning up. He's got 10 great shovel pass inside. They could not hand it on the baseline, but Dawes cleaning things up for LaSalle. Inside they go, fourth shot, no good, but the shooter's got the rebound and Barnes is fouled. That's what they've got to do. Get that shot inside the painted area, then you've got Barnes and Street pounding the glass. They'll bring Carmer in off the bench. This is the strength of Niagara Falls right here. And going to work is Barnes on the offensive glass. Get the big guys involved for the power cats. Julius Barnes was held scoreless in that second quarter after getting six in the first. Aiden Wisnett, 6'3", junior in for LaSalle, giving Kyron Bradley a rest. Julius Barnes, 28-23 LaSalle. They go right inside. Second chance opportunity, still no good for Wisnett. Rebounded by Barnes. Niagara Falls pushing it up the floor and taking it to class and scoring. Bruce got off the bench with two quick ones. And now Barnes with another rebound. Niagara Falls with a chance to cut it deeper here. Nice. And they go to Street. Beautiful penetration, thumping off to the big guy. Niagara Falls, front line players starting to step up now on the boards and making some shots. Oh, a runner in the paint. Tony Moore looked like he was going to cough it up, but he scores instead. Off the bench, a three. Oh. There's some life. Joey Korshuk. Five quick points off the bench. Roska. Here come the falls. The big guys cleaning up everything off the misses, really exerting themselves. I'm sure Dan Bazzani gave his team an earful 
in the locker room. For the lead, off the mark, King will chase down the loose ball in the corner. Turn it over. Starks, Corsica. Oh, where did he come from? Seven quick points for Joseph Corsica off the bench. Three of three from the field. There's your hot hand. And Niagara Falls is back in the lead. It's an 11-2 run. Lost to answer. No good. Street rebounds. And the big guys, Street and Barnes, look. Falls playing with renewed confidence here now. They've got a run going. Ten on the shot clock. Corsica three off the back iron. Jason Wisnat pulled that one away, but stepped out of bounds. Sell staying in zone. There's an open jumper. No, will not fall. But a foul call against the Explorers. There's a foul, number 40, Easton Wisnett. Wisnett picks up his second personal. The 33, Jim Sweet. That's a strike. 32. Second. It's Niagara Falls, a three point lead, 33 30. Goss draws a triple team, gets the shot off and hits. Corsica. Wow, what a play. He threw it off of Tony Moore and keeps possession for Niagara Falls. <laughs> Niagara Falls pulls it back out, slowing things down with 135 to play in the third quarter. Oh, that was a bad pass. Right into a double team, it's stolen away by Wisnet. LaSalle with a chance to go back in front. The drive and the dish. The follow. Good for Wisnet. Thirty-four, thirty-three. From outside, well off the mark from Jeff Street, and it's chased down by King. Tony Moore. Tony Moore. The cell answers back with six straight points to take a three-point lead. 30 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Been the most entertaining quarter of the game. Bat it around, bat it out. It'll be grabbed by Johnson. They can play for the last one here with 20 seconds left in the quarter. The shot off the mark from Starks. Sell pushing it up, and one too many passes, that won't count. That will not count, that came after the buzzer. What a quarter, 36-33 LaSalle. Eight more minutes to go in regulation. Keep it right here on Adelphia. 
at the end of three, the Snell 36, Niagara Falls High School 33. Are you wired for speed? Introducing Cable Modem. Internet service delivered on your home cable line. Convenient, affordable, and fast. Cable modems are up to 50 times faster than a standard modem. Here we go now. Call to find out more about Cable Modem. Now available in your area. Falls Convention and Civic Center, Lou Vanessa and Steve Vonzik, LaSalle cheerleaders, have something to cheer about, albeit tentatively, as they lead it by three, 36-33. It's been an entertaining second half, Steve. And a time for now in the power cast position as we begin the fourth quarter. Falls will inbound to start the fourth quarter. Steve, you know, you have to think that Niagara Falls felt a little more pressure going into this one. Seemed to bother them early. They responded well in the third quarter, had a nice run to take a 33-30 lead, but LaSalle rattled off the next six points. No good. Rebounded by Bradley. King tried to get it to Doss, couldn't. It goes the other side. They go to the glass hard, following his own miss, Tony Moore. Number 54, Tyron Bradley. A drive in the dish, the first shot blocked, the second one draws the foul, and Barnes will go to the line. Barnes without a field goal here in the second half. He has two free throws, and he'll have to go back to the line to earn two here. Cameron Bradley picked up his second. For 23, Julius Barnes, strike 32. Well, this is a gut check for Niagara Falls, no question. They haven't had too many games like this. They struggled against that team, but were able to put the Lumberjacks away. They were unable to get by Lockhart, but they have not faced the defense like the Explorers. And that'll be a turnover for the Explorers. Well, a good job right there on defense by the Power Cats. They're going to have to limit LaSalle as they did earlier in that third quarter, limiting the Explorers to just one shot. They've got to be patient, work the ball inside. Glad to have you back, partner. Inside, that's Julius Barnes. All started with the pass in the paint to Parmer. He saw his teammate on the baseline, the two big guys working together. And it's a two-point game for LaSalle. Another turnover. That one's taken away from Sharif. By Ingram, who brings it up the floor. Good job by Ingram. Knows he doesn't have it initially. Doesn't force it. Resets his offense. Double team on the big guy. Fires anyway. No good. And over the top goes Jeff Parmer. And he commits the foul. Farmer trying to track down that loose ball on the air and shot. Going over the back. An easy call for the official. There you see right here, Palmer trying to track down that miss. And thus the whistle. That's Amir Sharif at 5'9", having inside position on a 6'4 guy. And the result is LaSalle possession. It's not being 
big all the time. It's being where you need to be. All right, positioning bigger than you're looking good right down the boulevard. Tony Moore. Moore providing the offensive spark in the second half for the Explorers. Has eight second half points, four here in the fourth quarter, turned it over. Here comes Moore again. Up to Doss, a diving steal by Demondi Johnson. Johnson takes it up the floor, gets it inside. Unable to finish his Barnes, he'll go to the line and shoot two. Good pass inside by Johnson. So the big guy down on the baseline. Can't finish, but he gets his own offensive rebound. 40-36. LaSalle with five away remaining. This is going to be a great finish. Right here, the big guy, Julius Barnes. He's got to finish that. And they've had trouble inside. The big guys for Niagara Falls. Being bothered just enough by this swarming LaSalle defense to throw them off their mark. Barnes done a pretty good job at the free throw line. It's five of six. Oh. Followed by oh. Harbor. Good job by Harbor sneaking in. And do we have another turnover? Oh, 20 second timeout being taken here by Dan Bazzani. I wanted to mention that Amir Sharif picked up his fourth foul at the other end for LaSalle. It's 40-39. Is that correct? It'll be 39 off. See Harmer inside for Niagara Falls. Well, on the scoreboard it says 40-39, favor Niagara Falls high. Bench. Explorers are in the bonus situation. They'll be shooting one and one on the next foul against the Power Cats. Tony Moore on the triple drive again. Got it poked away, but he's really come alive in this second half. Blew all eight of his points, forcing the issue, challenging the big guys of Niagara Falls, taking it strong to the hole. Doss, a three. Only man underneath was Sharif. Doss in the lane. Actually, that was Tony Moore, excuse me. 10 second half points. They've all been on penetration, dribble drives right down the boulevard. He's been the spark. Moore in the second half, King in the first half. LaSalle's found somebody other than Doss to be an offensive spark in this game. They set the screen for Parmer. Parmer with four second half points. Trying to get the power cats a lift on offense, much needed. They cut it to one, look at this. A steal, and then he was bumped. Oh, I wait got... a minute. I don't need any of that. King and Ingram. Ingram was upset, thought he had a breakaway layup. And then King got into the play, picked his pocket. Ingram took exception to it and shoved King into the basket standard. Let's see if there are any technicals here. Both teams directed toward their bench area. The officials would like to restore order. Steve, there's something wrong with this. I don't know if the fans realize this, but I think the scoreboard is wrong. LaSalle got 40. They had 40, and they got a two-point basket, and only had 41 up there. Some, there's a replay again, and just don't need that. See, again, Ingram upset. I don't well, know why. Ingram's got no business being no, upset and no. pushing there. I mean, King tracked him down. St 
stole the basketball. I want to know what the real score is. They've got it up there, 42-41 in favor of LaSalle. That doesn't match my book. That well, could be, I, you know, I, maybe I'm wrong. The technical foul has been assessed. Dwight Doss will go to the line to shoot technical free throws. Ingram on the technical, no business shoving King hard to the floor near the basket standard. That can be dangerous. points per game average. And Ingram is out of this ball game after the technical. It's 43-41 in favor of LaSalle, the home club. They've got the scoreboard right. My apologies to the clock over there. Very patient. 43-41 LaSalle. Down to 13 on the shot clock. LaSalle very patient. Let's see if they get a good shot. Baseline drive, no good. Rebounded by Palmer. Now it's the Power Cats' turn. Make sure they get a good look at the basket. You're in a tight ball game inside three minutes. No foolish shots. The follow by Julius Barnes. Sometimes you just got to want to lose Julius Barnes up with authority ripping down the rebound for the finish. Tie score, 2.33 left to play. The crowd is into it. The ball's packing in the zone. Doss, no good. a factor off the bench just four points but he's willing to give his body up and crash the boards big lift for LaSalle who can hold it together down the stretch inside nice play Palmer finishes on the feet from Barnes two big guys hook up one more time nice look down low by Barnes Timeout, 22nd timeout taken by LaSalle. 45 all, 146 left. I don't know if DeWitt Doss caught a Charlie horse or a cramp, but he limps off the floor for LaSalle, and that could be big, 146 remaining. We'll keep an eyeball over there. Let's see if DeWitt Doss will be back in this ball game. You see the two big guys hooking up. Barnes down low for Palmer on the doorstep. Well, LaSalle, is, LaSalle has led most of the way in this one. Niagara Falls took the lead in the third quarter, 33-30, only to watch LaSalle rattle off the next eight points. It's been back and forth here in the fourth quarter. All knotted up, and again, Steve, big game atmosphere. Big rivalry. The Niagara Falls has been frustrated the entire evening, trying to get it together down the stretch. LaSalle just won't go away. They've had the lead most of it. Who can execute the best? LaSalle's going to try and minimize possessions here. Don't turn it over and make sure you get a good shot on each possession. Doss gets a good shot. Can't handle it. And Jeff Street. All tied up there with Wisnat. The possession arrow favors LaSalle with 121 to play. Keep Wis in mind the bonus situation. LaSalle would be shooting free throws. Niagara Falls would not on fouls right now. Look at Wisnet on the offensive glass. We talked about him moments ago. 
Goes to the floor hard. Gives his team an opportunity. Tough shot from a tough spot. And Niagara Falls gets it. 1-10 to play. Timeout taken by Dan Fasani. Wow. Well, DeWitt Doss, the star player for LaSalle, unable to finish his last few field goal attempts. They're getting the ball in his hands and letting him go to work. He's cooling off right now. He's been over 25 points a game. He's been held. 13 points in this one. Pandemonium in the convention and Civic Center here for this one. Great atmosphere, student body on hand. What a way to go out, Steve, as we've been talking about so much the last regular season meeting. Here, see, that's a tough shot from a tough angle, which gave Niagara Falls the possession as they come out of this timeout. What a way to go out in front of a big crowd like this in a tight ball game. I was at a breakfast this morning and spoke at it with these two teams and the girls basketball teams, bringing them two together. They'll be teammates next year, those that are not seniors. They talked about all the adults reminding the, the players and the cheerleaders this is a night they'll remember for the rest of their lives, whether they realize it or not. <laughs> right, not only the players, but the people in the stands We'll remember this for a long time to come. Streak gets a double team. And he's tied up. And that's a possession arrow call. So Niagara Falls gets it on the possession arrow. So the arrow swings back to LaSalle now with 56 seconds left. But look at the scrappy interior defense. Wisnet tying things up down low. The big guys unable to shake free and get their shots. It's been that story the entire evening. But nobody came to the ball there to help Julius uh, to help the big guy inside. They've been frustrated, no doubt. Look at That's this. That's a bad pass, and they turn it over both ways. Wow. Horrible pass out to the midcourt stripe, and then turned right back over. Demondi Johnson takes a big sigh as he brings the ball over half court. 43 seconds left to play. 20 second differential on the shot clock and the game clock. Demondi Johnson being guarded by James King. 10 on the shot clock, here we go. Corsica needs to give it up. Finds an opening and hey! <laughs> Nowhere else to go and he buries it off the fence jump. Corsica, nine points. I didn't think they'd get a shot off, Lou, the youngster collected himself, calmly drains the leap and lean shot. Wow. This place is absolutely rocking. Everybody on their feet, remember they're gonna play again on Friday. But nobody's thinking about that now. Shot clock draining, splits the defense with a step under move and hits the leaner. What a spark off the bench for Dan Bazzani, the junior Joseph Corsica. Sir. They return to the floor with 18 ticks left in regulation. What a crowd on hand, what a ball game, and what a finish. How could you have it any other way? The cell has to go the length of the floor. DeWitt Doss, your number one option. Tony Moore, 10 second half points. A second option. And here we go. Moore brings it up. Uh -oh. Moore takes it inside. The dish to Sharif. Gives off. No good. Wisnan with the follow. No good. Rebounded by the power catch. Jeff Streets tied up with sale possession. Three seconds left. Niagara Falls celebrating too soon. It's LaSalle's ball with three seconds left. Timeout taken by the Explorers. You're right, Luke. Possession arrow favoring LaSalle. 
on the tie up. Hats off to Anson Wisnick keeping things alive. There he gets the pass inside right there. Can't get it, but he gets on the offensive boards. One more opportunity, can't get it. But look at him jumping there to tie things up for LaSalle. Forced the jump ball and gives his team another opportunity with three seconds remaining. They can win it with a three. They design it up in each huddle, of course. You have to settle your club down. If your camp is on, they were getting a little excited there and thought it was over, but the possession arrow favors LaSalle because of those two wonderful tie-ups under each basket. They tied up street at one end. Now they tied them up here at the other end. And LaSalle has the ball back and a chance to tie and send it to overtime or a three-point play wow. to win it. That's the story. Everybody in this building is on their feet, Lou, for the final last gasp effort by LaSalle to either tie it or send it in overtime. Timeout taken by Dambazani. We saw the setup for LaSalle and decided to call time. Well, if you didn't see this one in its entirety, you gotta see it from start to finish. If you're watching on Thursday, tune in again Friday, February 18th for Roll the VCR. And if you haven't had enough of these two teams, they're playing again in the Niagara Frontier League Championship game. LaSalle representing the Frontier Division, Niagara Falls representing the Niagara Division. It's the NFL Championship, and we got it right here on your local Adelphia channel. Stay tuned right here Monday and Tuesday, February 21st and 22nd, from that game being played on a Friday Night. It's the second half of a doubleheader in the first half. Ken East and Lockport in girls high school basketball. But Steve, they're not thinking about that now with three texts left on this one. This one's for bragging rights, the last regular season meeting ever between the two schools. 35 straight for LaSalle on the line here. Well, whoever kind catches, of a packed house. Yeah, whoever catches this inbound loop has got to make a quick decision whether to pass or shoot. Not a lot of time. And we'll see how Niagara Falls plays it. I would expect they'd be a little bit aggressive and not sit back in the zone as they can lose on a three-point shot. There's going to be a heck of a celebration one way or another. You're not kidding. Unbelievable here at the convention center. 4,000 people on their feet. And here we go. Pass stolen by Demondi Johnson and a foul. The inbound was tipped away to Johnson. And that'll do it. Look at the mob scene at midcourt by the Power Cats. The clock is reading zero. The officials have left the building. This one's in the books. 47, 45, Niagara Falls over LaSalle in the final regular season meeting between these two clubs, snapping the LaSalle winning streak here tonight. Steve, there's still more to come. We got player of the game interviews, highlights, and stats. Let's take a look at the final three seconds first. I believe it was Palmer defending the inbounds pass, tip the pass high, and it was taken down by Johnson. Steve, we talked so much about LaSalle's defense in the first half, and the power can't seal it on a defensive gem of their own on the inbounds play. We'll take a break and be back with more from the Convention and Civic Center right after this. It's high school basketball on Adelphia.
The streak is over as Niagara Falls finally breaks through against LaSalle by a score of 47 45. And Julius Barnes, what a ball game! Yes, it was a very interesting game. We finally broke the streak. Yeah, thank, you... thank God for giving us the strength to do that. Without him, I don't think we would have ever made it. Made well, it this far. It seemed like an uphill battle the entire ball game. These guys really frustrated you in the first half with that 1 3 1 defense. What did Coach Bazzani say to you guys in the locker room? He told us to keep our heads because our players was getting out of control and we was getting frustrated because the score, they were up. And that just bothered us because we had the size advantage and they were little, but they were staying it in there with us. Yeah, you're right. They were not afraid to mix it up inside. But in the second half, you guys came out, hit the boards, limited LaSalle to one shot, then got things going offensively between yourself Jeff Street and Jeff Palmer down low kind of turned the tide. You finished with 14 points, but none bigger than the basket you had to lock this ball game up at 43 down the stretch. Tell us about that one. It was a close one. I knew I had to make that shot by me being a senior. It was my teammates, too. We just had a good game, played intense. I knew that I had to get the rebound in case of my player missed, and I had to go up strong with it, and that was all to it. Talk about Joseph Corsica, an unsung hero for your ball club, off the bench for nine big points. So you big guys down low really got some help. Yes, Joey, he's been out for a while short of injury, and he really came through this game. He played a big game. Without him, I don't think we would have ever been up getting this close in the game. Well, you got to play these guys again on Friday night. Are you going to be ready? Yeah, we're going to have to. We're going to have to keep the same intensity because I know LaSalle, the good team that they is, they're going to be ready to come back with revenge. Well, look at the streak is over. Congratulations and good luck at the Erie County Fairground. I know you have to meet uh, one of the uh, Kennedy wives, but they're, uh, they're all expecting babies, as you may know, <laughs> and are unavailable at this time. My sisters may all be expecting as well. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, don't quote me on that. <laughs> now, you ladies are the... Uh, you ladies are the best looking group of women in the country and uh, it's my honor and privilege to meet and speak with you today and uh, I'll be sure and tell uh, Jackie, Joan and Ethel uh, just what they missed. Right this way. All oh, right, Doctor. Ted, it's a baby. Right Something's wrong. I'm so sorry. No, there are rumors about your sister and this Onassis guy. Don't know. Courtney, be careful. The same law practice. Say that isn't my client. First years. At the years of war, the hero Odysseus sailed for home to the island of Ithaca, there, far beyond the horizon. But the gods were. 